Miss, uh, Miss, 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 is it Miss, Mrs? Mrs. Mrs. Okay. <laughs> Cool. This intro cutting bit is going to be amazing. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. So, uh, <laughs> hi everyone. Welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. I am your host, Salal. Today, I have somebody very special with me. She is absolutely amazing. She is actually a homeschool mom. She's got two young kids and she has achieved a phenomenal amount of success. Please help me welcome Mrs. Lindsay McCarthy. Um, her main mission in life is to actually go ahead and spread the message of spiritual and personal development to parents and children and more specifically how as parents we can actually convey that message uh, and those values instill those values of spiritual and personal development into our children so they can actually become more whole more complete human beings the book she wrote is called the miracle morning for parents and families uh, she co-authored that with her husband and hal alrod i'm sure you guys know about hal alrod if you don't then check out hal alrod and his book called the miracle morning it's absolutely amazing he's got some really deep insights on how you can transform as a person when you have a very strong morning ritual something that i absolutely believe in so um, with that, let's jump into it. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dalal. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on. Lindsay, please tell us, how did you get started on this path? What was the initial spark that ignited this flame? Right. So my husband and I have a mutual friend named Tim Rode. And Tim Rode started this organization called One Life Fully Lived. And he's, it was started in 2010. We went to the very first conference. There was like 70 people there in his hometown of Portola, California. And then we had kids and we stopped going for a few years. And um, in 2014, he called us up and he's like, you guys gotta get back here. You won't believe how this thing has grown. You know, I have this guy, Hal Elrod, he's the keynote this year. We're like, all right, Tim, we'll come. <laughs> so, we go to Reno, Nevada, and we're completely blown away. You know, there's hundreds of people at this conference now. Hal's up there giving his message of the miracle morning. And, uh, you know, he says he kind of had two rock bottoms. The first was when he literally died in a car crash. And then in 2008, you know, he kind of crashed again uh, when the the financial crash happened and that was kind of his second rock bottom and that's when he created this morning ritual called the miracle morning and it's six powerful practices called the lifesavers silence affirmations visualization exercise reading and scribing so mike and i are sitting in the audience hearing how I'll talk about this and we kind of turn to each other and we're like we gotta do this <laughs> we get his book we read it on the plane ride home day one, we're like, we're going to get up an hour earlier, do all these six things. So the, the alarm goes off, we get up, we're doing our miracle morning, and in walks our two-year-old. <laughs> Ember, go back to sleep, what are you doing? We're like, we just put on a TV show or something, because we're like, uh, we're doing this new thing, you know, leave us alone. <laughs> and so that was not a very successful day one. <laughs> So day two, we try it again. Same thing happens. Our kids come running in. And after like a week of this, my daughter turns to me and she goes, Mommy, I want to do what you're doing. I was like, oh. Because they saw us. We're like jumping on a little mini tra or trampoline, screaming affirmations. <laughs> like, I think our parents have gone mad, but <laughs> it looks fun. So we want it. <laughs> So we're like, oh yeah, why don't we teach them to kind of have their own miracle morning? So as we started doing that, you know, they're like, oh, we're not really missing out on playtime <laughs> with mom and dad. So they started sleeping to their normal time, which gave Mike and I the opportunity to kind of get our miracle morning in uh, before they woke up. And then, you know, it's kind of that saying, secure your own oxygen mask before assisting anyone else. So as we started doing that, um, you know, our lives kept getting incrementally better. We were becoming more confident people, more confident parents, and our kids could kind of see a difference in us too. And we kind of, we did grasp onto this idea that they should be doing this in the morning too. Um, 
So we kind of were pushing them a little bit to try more of the savers. We taught them affirmations and we would meditate with them in the morning. We'd have dance parties in the kitchen. <laughs> Um, you know, just teaching them little principles um, of the Miracle Morning, but in their terms. And then flash forward to One Life Fully Lived in 2015, Mike and I are now presenters. Uh, you know, we're full on with Tim again. <laughs> and, and Hal was, again, the keynote. So we, I think it was in Sacramento, California. And at the welcome dinner on the Friday night, I got to meet Hal and I just, went up to him and I said, hey, I want to thank you for writing The Miracle Morning. We've been teaching our kids these principles and it's totally changed our family dynamic. You know, our mornings have gone from super hurried and stressful and to calm and everybody's kind of on the same page and it's because of The Miracle Morning. And he was like, this is so cool. Like my kids don't do it. I want to, you know, teach me your secrets. <laughs> And I said, you know, our son is actually here and he would love to meet you. And he was like, oh, bring him to breakfast tomorrow. I'd love to hear his affirmations and, you know, hear it from him. So we bring Tyler to breakfast and he has his homemade ABC affirmation book and he's saying his affirmations to Hal. And you could just see Hal getting excited. And he's like, this is so cool. Like, can I take pictures of this? Like, I want to feature you guys on something. And we're like, yeah, whatever you need. And, um, a couple weeks later, I woke up with these poems in my head. And so it's literally like midnight. I jump out of bed. I'm typing on my computer. And in the morning, I sent it to my husband first because I was too scared to send it to Hal. And he's like, this is good. You should send this to Hal. And so I sent it to Hal. And the next day, he wrote back and he's like, I need to write a book with you. And you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like a little picture book for kids. And he's like, no, 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 no. Like parents need this information. He's like, the book needs to be for parents. And I'm like, you're right. Um, so we signed the contract with him. And, a couple, you know, six months later, we had a book on Amazon with Hal Elrod's name on it also, <laughs> which is pretty cool. <laughs> wow. That's, that's a very very amazing story to be honest like how just like one conference led to all of this mm -hmm. it is pretty amazing and yeah. you know something i didn't say too is as we were practicing the savers with our kids tyler our six-year-old at the time he kind of turned to me and he's like mom i don't get it why do i have to save my life mm -hmm. i'm like you know i really had to think about that i'm like most adults kind of turn to personal development like Hal did, like when they're in a rough patch and they want to kind of recreate themselves or, you know, take a different direction with their lives. But as a child, they're kind of brand new and, you know, that concept doesn't make a lot of sense to them. So I was like, well, we don't have to call it that, buddy. Like we can call it whatever we want. And so he and I together kind of created a new acronym just for children and it's called the charms. So for adults, it's savers, silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. But as a six and a two-year-old, you know, scribing was pretty difficult for them. So we were like, well, we'll call that creativity. And you mm -hmm. can, you know, play with Play-Doh, you can paint, you can draw, you can make up a song, you know, <laughs> you, can, you can do anything. Let's just get the juices flowing in the morning and get your creativity going. And then we wanted to expand on exercise for them too, to include a healthy breakfast. So we called that health. Affirmations, we kept the same. Uh, reading, we kept the same. We combined silence and visualization into a category we call meditation. And then we added our own S that we call service because Mike and I are very service-oriented people, and we wanted to instill that value in our kids. So we're like, why don't we build it into their morning ritual? So every day we get to ask them, what'd you do for service this morning? And they have to think about it. Like, you know, what did I do for somebody else today? Or what can I do for somebody else today? And <laughs> That's amazing. I, you know what? I love the message behind the book. I really do. But the way that you're explaining right now, how you came up with a new acronym and you're trying to explain, you know, how all this works for your kids, et cetera. I mean, that's, 
amazing. That's just like, I absolutely love that. And I'd love to know more. So can you maybe dig a little bit deeper there and just talk to us a little bit more about how did you actually explain this to the kid? What, what was that journey like for you and for them to actually, you know, start this morning ritual as a family and how did things change for you guys? Like what no, what changes did you notice with, with the kids and, you know, um, also as, as a family dynamic? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great questions. Um, so the way we kind of got started with them, like I said, they kind of, interjected themselves into it. So at first it was just really small steps. You know, when I was journaling and they were awake, I would give them a piece of paper of their own and say, here, you journal. And, um, you know, we started exercising together in the mornings. And, you know, our exercise for Miracle Morning, it's very simple. It might be like the seven minute app. It might be a dance party in the kitchen while we're cooking breakfast. It's just something to kind of get your blood pumping in the morning. It's not like your full body workout that you might do a little bit later in the day. Um, we started teaching them affirmations. So the really the first thing we did with them to kind of cover all of the charms was to create an ABC affirmation book. So day one, we're like, pick an A word that describes you. So Tyler picked, I am awesome. And Ember picked, I am amazing. <laughs> and so we wrote that at the top of the page and we're like, draw a picture of, you know, what's awesome to you, Tyler, and what's amazing about you, Ember. And so I think Ember at two just scribbled on the page. <laughs> you know, <laughs> great. That's perfect. You know, you have to keep things age appropriate. And you know, at two, they're probably just going to scribble on the page and that's okay because that's what a two-year-old does. <laughs> And at, you know, at six, I think Tyler drew a stick figure with his hands up like this. And he's like, that's awesome. I'm like, that is awesome. And, you know, so it's just these little tiny baby steps. And as they get older, you can kind of dive into a little bit more of the principles. But it, it's just getting them kind of primed mm -hmm. to even have a morning ritual. So now every day, you know, over time, what has changed is our conversation in the morning. Now, every single day, we're instilling our family values, which the charms are our family values, in our kids. And we get to ask them, like, hey, what did you do for creativity today? And we get to have more powerful conversations around our family values. Like, you know, sometimes Tyler's like, oh, I made a paper airplane. And I'm like, well, you know, you already know how to make paper airplanes. So is that really creative? Have you really stretched have you gone outside your comfort zone mm. and we get to kind of have a little chat about uh you know is that really creative or what is creativity and how can you fulfill that every day wow that's amazing um <laughs> You know, I, I'm, I, first of all, I'm super impressed. And I, seriously, while you were telling all this stuff, I was, I was sitting here and I was just getting chills. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> so if people in the audience, if you're there and you're a parent and, you know, you better be taking notes. Like, seriously, I think there's some real gold here and you better be taking notes because this is awesome. And I'm loving every, every moment of this conversation. So Lindsay, Tell me, what does it, like, how has it changed you as a person and especially as a mom, now that actually you're doing this morning ritual with your kids and you're instilling these values with them um, every single day? I think it's made me more calm as a parent and it, it's given me some kind of consistency and skills that I can kind of fall back on because before we had any kind of morning ritual, they'd be like, mom, can I watch TV before we go out for the day? And I'm like, I didn't really have a good reason as to why they couldn't, you know, I'm like, no, cause I don't want you to. You know? <laughs> and now, you know, we've kind of, the charms are family values and we have a rule that nobody can have any electronics mm. until they've done their miracle morning. So like that goes for mom and dad too. So, <laughs> um, and I think, because it's a family role and not just something we've put on the kids, you know, that it's more respectful to them and they're more willing to follow it. So, and they'll call mom and dad out on it too. Like sometimes they'll see me on my phone in the morning and they're like, mom, did you do your miracle morning? And I'm like, 
yes. <laughs> or I'm like, no, I didn't. You caught me. And, uh, let's do a meditation together. <laughs> or whichever one I haven't crossed off yet today. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. I love that. And, and you know what? That's, that's so cool. The fact that the kids are, um, they, they feel a part of it. I think that's really important because it's so easy to say, actually, no, 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 you're too young for this, you know, go away, do something else, do some like, I don't know, read a book, play with your toys, you know, watch something on, on television, whatever. Um, but actually the fact that you got them involved uh, and, you know, made, made allow them to be a part of it. And I think that's, that's really powerful. Uh, and again, it goes to show that actually if you're you know, ready to think a little bit harder and, and work with the kids, you can actually get them to you know, um, do something that seems to be a lot more advanced for their age. But if you do it right, it, it just you know, fits. It, 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 you can fit it to you know, wherever they're at. You can meet them at their level. Mm-hmm. So I absolutely love that. Um, how, how do you think the kids... Um, you know, have grown and how do they find it, you know, in terms of doing the, the morning practices, do, are they, you know, um, kind of excited by it and then going into school and talking about it with their friends and, you know, sharing it with their teachers, etc. cetera. Um, and have you noticed any changes in terms of like what the teachers are telling you on how they're behaving in school? Yeah. Well, they're homeschooled. So. Ah, of course they are homeschooled. See, this is what happens when I just like go down a rabbit hole and just completely forget about it. Goodness. Okay. But right. they, in, in their defense, they still go to a physical location uh, three days a week during the school year. So they, they do have other young people that they're around all the time and they have other adults in their lives. And they do. They will tell people about the charms. I've actually got to go to their homeschool center and share with other parents the charms so a lot of the parents in our homeschool community they do know about it i don't know if they actually do it at home but um it is i love where they go to school too because they're very open to new ideas and Mm. you know they kind of teach the kids mindfulness practices while they're there and um so i got to come in and and lead a mindfulness meditation one day with the kids, which was really fun. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, I actually did say that myself, didn't I? That, yeah, you, you know, you're a homeschool mom. I, I did say that. It <laughs> okay. shows Salal needs a coffee. That's what that shows. <laughs> I need a coffee. All right. Okay, cool. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's, let's move on from that disaster <laughs> of a question that I came up with. Anyway, so um, Lindsay, I know that you um, you're really passionate about this, and I know you you've you've appeared on so many different podcasts. You have your own website, you have your own blog, and you're really trying to get this message out, um, you know, to to the parents and and to the children as well. So, in doing all of this, what have you noticed in terms of when you talk to other parents? How do they receive this? Yeah, a lot of people want to know like what does a, a normal morning look for you guys and uh, or like how long does it take and um, you know that my answer for that is that we've kind of built it into our morning so now it's mm-hmm. you know it doesn't there's no like separate miracle morning time it's like it just is our morning so the first thing my kids do when they wake up is they go to their art drawer and pull out art supplies and uh, they get started on their creativity like it's just become such a habit for them now that it's not even they don't even second guess it like that's just what we do in the morning and when they have been in other places like when we're traveling and stuff or when friends are staying over and you know the friends will be like what are you doing (laughs) (laughs) you know other kids are like grabbing their tablets first thing in the morning and my kids are like, oh, you're not allowed to do that. Like, mm. we, we got to do something creative first. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I think to them, it's really become their normal. Like, they don't mm. really know anything else. Yeah. Uh, and it's really cool. Like, when we do these fan abundance retreats and stuff, my kids get to do the charms live for other families. And... But that's, that is what people want to know. They're like, how do you do this in the morning and still get all the other stuff done that mm. needs to happen? And the answer is kind of, it's called habit stacking. So 
everybody has a morning ritual, whether they want to admit it or not, it might not be a very effective one. <laughs> But like you still wake up in the morning, you probably brush your teeth or your hair, you might eat something or have a coffee. Um, so just stack a little habit on top of the habits you already have. So when you're brushing your hair, say some affirmations while you're, while you're doing it. While you're drinking your coffee, read something. Mm -hmm. And after you're done that, write something down, journal. And you know, while you're cooking breakfast, you could have a dance party in the kitchen. Like, it doesn't have to take any more time than your morning already takes mm -hmm. if you're just mm -hmm. kind of reframe and become a little bit more efficient. Like, we listen to audiobooks in the morning while we're eating breakfast, and that's our reading time. Like, I'm not physically reading to the children usually, an audiobook is, and they read way better than I do. So. <laughs> Uh, or if you have a commute in the morning, same thing. Put an audio book on while you're on your way to school with the kids. And, um, yeah, there's lots of little tips and tricks uh, like that. Perfect. You, like, yeah, combine things. Mm. So exercise and affirmations are really easy to combine. You know, do jumping jacks while you're saying your affirmations. And, um, you can even do a walking meditation if your kids walk to the school bus in the morning you know we used to do that with tyler in kindergarten when he did go to public school we'd walk him to the bus stop and on the way we'd be like let's do a walking meditation i want you to be really present with all the sounds that you're hearing and you know any sensations you're feeling and it you know just these little mindfulness practices i i one of my most recent blogs is about you know can a two-year-old do charms and mm. yeah they can and there's all these little props you know like using stuffed animals to help them with breath work or those little mini spheres to go in and out with their breath and it you know it's just getting them to be aware and honestly kids are way more aware than we are like they could teach us a lot about meditation <laughs> <laughs> That is actually very true because they're hyper present all the time, isn't it? Like we, they don't have the kind of the back dialogue going on in the back of the head all the time. They are hyper present. So yeah, no, that's very, very true. Um, and yeah, I, I love the fact that you talked about how you can integrate it just into your normal everyday morning routine. Like you don't have to go out of your way to kind of like, you know, put on a like, you know, monk's robe and sit down and do the meditation or anything like that. You could just like integrate that into your normal morning routine. So mm -hmm. I think that's really amazing. And for people in the audience, you know, I, my question to you guys is, well, how can you integrate these practices into your morning routine? Because my morning routine is really simple. Um, crawl out of bed and make a cup of coffee. <laughs> I need one right now. Right. So yeah. Um, it's it, you can just try and integrate things into your normal morning routine. And that's, uh, I, I think really great for, for people to hear simply because when I think, especially parents, when they might hear about this, they'll be like, Oh, so how much planning time does go into this? And what time do you wake up? And then, you know, uh, how, how do you actually manage everything else? What time do you make breakfast then? And what time do you actually get them ready for school? And what time do you have your morning shower? Like you just integrate. I'd love that. That's amazing. Awesome. And then yeah. use some great examples as well. Honestly, our kids don't always get through all of it in the morning either. And that's why we've kind of created that rule that you have to get all your charms done before you can have electronics time. So if our five-year-old's given us a hard time about affirmations in the morning. I'm like, it's your choice whether you do it or not. You yeah. know, I'm not going to force you to say your affirmations, <laughs> yeah. but it is your choice and there's a consequence to the choice too. Like these are our family values. And if mm -hmm. you don't want to do it now, you can do it later, but don't ask me for your iPad until you're ready to say your affirmations. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and again, it, it gives them an understanding um, for why they can't have the iPad, right? Like you said earlier, like before you didn't have a reason, but now you can, you know, say, Hey, you haven't, you haven't done your affirmations or you haven't done your creativity. That's why you can't have an iPad. And then there's a genuine reason that they can understand be like, Oh, right. Okay. So if I need to go do that first, plus they right. get to understand priorities, right? Like what is the priority here? First thing in the yes. morning, 
do I go and look after myself? Do I go and, you know, do my meditation and, and um, you know, the, uh, the creativity and everything else? Or do I actually, you know, go on and play with the iPad? Like, what is the priority here? So I think that's amazing. That's a really powerful message that I think a lot of parents can benefit from. Um, and I think I, I need to change my morning routine as well. So uh, I'll be working on that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So Lindsay, um, please talk to us about your um, actual, uh, oh man, what's the word? Your, <laughs> your, your, oh goodness. I really need a cup of coffee. Okay. So your uh, fan abundance um, group, that's, that's what I was talking about. Yes. Your, um, your fan abundance group. Yeah, so right now we're kind of in the launch stage of this new mastermind group called Fan Abundance. My husband, he's been running uh, a mastermind group called Go Abundance for a while now. And, you know, one of the pillars of Go Abundance is authentic relationships. And most of the people that are attracted to that group are family men. Mm. So he's like, we want to really you know, Mike and I believe that if the whole family is not growing together, you're kind of growing apart. So mm. we're like, how can we, you know, the guys will go to these go abundance events and come back on fire and they're trying to get their wives and kids on board. Like I just learned all this amazing stuff. Like I want to integrate it right away. And the wives and kids are like, Whoa, like, <laughs> slow down, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are like, how do we, you know, get the whole family involved? And uh, so we started having events for the whole family and they would come and talk about their goals as a family versus, you know, just the guy's business goals or just, you know, what he wants to do in his life personally and comes back and is like, let's do all this stuff. And the, you know, the family hasn't been a part of it. So they're like, uh, that sounds great, but <laughs> like, we're still here in the real world. You know? Yeah. 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 So, you know, we're now we're giving the whole family a couple days to come together and it's facilitated. So, you know, we're asking questions and there's presenters there just like any other mastermind group, but it's all for the family life and how do we balance? Cause these are all entrepreneurial families. So yeah. usually either the man or the wife is out there bringing in the bacon, you know, and either the husband or wife is kind of at home holding down the fort. And, um, you know, those, the ones at home holding down the fort sometimes feel left behind. So it's like, how do we get them more up to speed so that the whole family is on the same team instead of like, there's the home team and there's mm. the business team. And yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And again, I think that this, you're absolutely right. A lot of the times where people do go to personal development events or they go to a conference or something like that, they come back and they're just like, right, let's, you know, crack on with this stuff. And, you know, everything's going to be awesome. And then everybody's like, actually, you know, just we're not on the same page here. Right. Let's, let's, right. The let's, family let's, at home is like, home. pop the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, how do we create the bubble around the whole family so that everybody is moving forward? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think to be honest, like, uh, you know, whoever it is, if they've, you know, whether that is the husband or the wife, if they've actually been to the conference, they come back and try and make these changes and the family's actually resisting that, that can cause a lot of frustration. But, you know, here, when you have something available to you where you can, you can start small and, and you can, but you can start together. And that's the thing, right? Like you do it together, mm -hmm. but you can start small. And I think that's really powerful because a lot of times you are thinking like, well, actually, you know, I, I've learned all this stuff. How, how do I get everybody else excited about it? Like, how can I get them involved? Mm -hmm. But the miracle morning for, for families and parents is, is just the perfect way to do it. So yeah. Awesome. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, thank you. The word I was looking for was mastermind. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just dropped off. Like, I don't know what's happening up here, but it just dropped <laughs> off my grid. Just could not, think of the word at the time. Um, thank you. For that. This is going to be an awful interview. Um, 
everybody's gonna think I'm crazy and uh, I like it's like all the other previous one have been flukes and this is the real <laughs> Talal coming out. Um, Awesome. Can I can I just ask you to very quickly be, before we start looking at you know closing the interview? Can I ask you to just very quickly run us through exactly what the the morning actually looks like for you and your kids, just so for people to get some sort of picture on, uh, uh you know, basically what they what they can do, where where they can start, what what are some of the things that they can be doing? Right. So I usually wake up 15, 20 minutes before the kids. Some days I don't, and they're actually awake when I wake up, or they wake me up, and those mornings look a little different. But ideally, I wake up about 20 minutes before the kids so I can get my meditation done, because that one's really hard to do when they're awake, honestly. Because, you know, the way kids meditate and the way adults meditate are a little different, and, you know, kids can only sit still for so long. <laughs> So I wake up 20 minutes before them, get my meditation done, and start on my reading and journaling. Then they usually wake up. They'll start on their creativity while I'll finish up my journaling. And then we'll all make breakfast and have breakfast together. Usually when we're cooking is kind of when um, some exercise is happening, whether it's a dance party, Simon Says is a big hit with kids. Um, the seven-minute app is really easy too. We like to do that one and it's good because it's all body weight stuff. So the kids mm. aren't, uh, you know, lifting anything heavy or whatever. Um, and then after breakfast, you, during breakfast, we'll usually put on an audio book. So they're kind of getting their reading done and breakfast all at the same time. Uh, if we're going somewhere, we usually continue the audio book in the car. Uh, what haven't we covered? Service, you know, again, age plays a big part in that. If they're two, if you're folding the laundry, they could help separate the socks or, uh, you know, so service is mainly chores. We like to call them family contributions mm -hmm. so that the kids feel like they're actually contributing to something. Um, you know, the other day my mom had a minor surgery, so the kids did creativity and service at the same time. They made her a get well card. And, you know, it's, it's still service because they're thinking about another person and it's creativity at the same time. So I guess what I'm saying is we don't really have a typical morning. <laughs> but, um, everything kind of gets in there somewhere. And then, like this week, the kids were at camp. So when I dropped them off at camp today, I went on a run on my own to cover my exercise portion. They were walking around and doing skateboarding. So they got their exercise in at camp. And I think that's all of them. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, do, do you time any of this? Like, you know, for example, um, you know, the creativity bit or the meditation bit, are you timing how long that is? Or do, is it just kind of more however, the kids can do it for however long they want? Um, yeah, I don't put a time limit on any of them, Okay. but when they're doing creativity, you know, Tyler, especially, he likes to kind of do things quickly and he's like, yeah, that was creative, wasn't it? I'm like, uh, <laughs> it's a creative excuse to get up, <laughs> but it doesn't count. <laughs> so, you know, cause he'll like write something real quick and be like, I did my creativity. I'm like, eh, I don't know, buddy. So with him, we've started to have to add a little boundaries and limits of, you know, what is creativity really? Yeah, yeah. Because now he's nine, like he mm. can actually write a paragraph. So we're like, maybe you should start journaling now that you know how to write. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So I, I love the fact you're also stretching them as, as they grow up as well. So that's great. That's perfect. Um, Lindsay, what does it mean to you when other people actually adopt the miracle morning for parents and families um, and see the benefit and they turn around and, and actually tell you how their life has changed? Yeah, those days are just, they make me so happy because that's why we wrote the book. We wanted to help other parents to integrate this into their family life. 
So when I get notes or Facebook messages from parents saying, you know, I have this small win today. It's like, yay. <laughs> like, that's so awesome. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Well, Lindsay, this has been uh, absolutely tremendous, uh, despite the fact that I, uh, I, I really need a cup of coffee. Um, <laughs> but this has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, I love your message, love your journey. Um, and I think you are going to make a difference in a lot of people's lives, especially parents who sometimes do feel kind of isolated and lost because they have their jobs to do and they have to come home and then, you know, do everything as a parent and, you know, deal with the kids do all their chores, et cetera. So they do sometimes end up feeling quite isolated, but you do have a very strong message on how you can bridge the, the family gap, but also how you can actually grow together as a family and integrate you know, the, the spiritual principles and the principles of personal development into your daily life. Um, so I think you know, for the audience, guys, make sure you go ahead and check out Lindsay's book. It's called The Miracle Morning for Parents and Families. It's available on Amazon. Check out her website and blog, etc. I'll put all the links below in the description so you guys can go and check those things out. So, Lindsay, can you please tell us how people can reach out to you, find out more about you, and how they can help you right now? Yeah, so my blog is on uh, gratefulparent.com. And then if you want to reach me on Facebook, there's a Facebook group, same name as the book, The Miracle Morning for Parents and Families. I'm in there every day, so it's pretty much the best place to get a hold of me. And yeah, I, if you like the book, I would be happy if you'd share it with your friends and other people who you think might find it useful. Guys, if you are a parent, I'm sure you found this conversation to be tremendously valuable. There were some real golden nuggets um, in this conversation. The whole thing about how you can grow as a family and how you can actually get the kids involved. And more specifically, the examples that Lindsay used on how she got her kids involved and how she's actually helping them develop and, and work on these principles of the miracle morning and how the kids are growing and they are actually understanding these you know, very advanced stuff, actually, if you think about it for kids, but they're understanding these advanced, you know, um, philosophy of personal development and spirituality. I think that's wonderful. Um, the, there is so much value here that I highly encourage you guys to actually share this conversation with other parents. If you know you have any friends, colleagues, etc., who are also parents, I think they can really benefit from this conversation. Um, and, you know, Lindsay is absolutely world class. I mean, she has got her own blog. She's got her own website. She's appeared on so many different other podcasts and shows. Um, she is done. She, she's got her own fan abundance retreat group. Um, she's got her Facebook group. She is, you know, actually going and, uh, you know, delivering talks um, on stages, sharing the stage with Hal Alrod. Okay, now that's saying something. So Lindsay is absolutely world class. She has a lot to offer. Um, so again, I would highly encourage you guys to go and reach out to Lindsay, just start a conversation. Um, and if you found any, you know, golden nuggets in this conversation, anything that really resonated with you, then I think Lindsay would really appreciate hearing what is it that you that you're going to be implementing and why that was useful to you. Um, so with that, I just really appreciate you guys sharing this time with me. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because it helps us grow. And it allows me to bring on more amazing guests where we can share these amazing, powerful conversations with them and learn from them. Because that's the whole, the whole concept behind this channel, behind this show, is that we want to learn from other people who have achieved amazing success in their life so we can try and follow in their footsteps and achieve the same results. Lindsay, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Talal. It was fun. Awesome. All right, take care, guys. Hustle hard, and I'll catch you in the next one.